Hare Krishna. So today we will discuss about the song of prayer that Srila Prabhupada composed on the Jaladuta, the ship that took him to America. As Srila Prabhupada approached the Boston Fire on this ship, so all alone about to do something historically unprecedented give the message of pure devotion to Krishna to a highly materialistic western society this song reveals Srila Prabhupada's consciousness what was his uh, contemplation in fact uh, when a warrior is about to go for a war the thing that the warrior thinks about most is the, is the weapons of course the strategy to use the weapons is there also but the weapons are important <coughs> so weapons and the strategy how they are going to be used so this song reveals Prabhupada's war strategy the song was actually com uh, composed by Shri Prabhupada with nobody to hear him he was all alone only person hearing it was Krishna and in fact for some time the song was lost later on it was just discovered almost accidentally of course it was not accident, accident it was serendipity it was a divine providence and that the profoundly devotional heart of Srila Prabhupada and his faith in the process of pure devotion is revealed in this song so let's Look at it. So, Boro Krupa Koile Krishna Adhame Raprati Kilagiya Anile Hetha Koro Ebe Gati Boro Krupa Koile Krishna Krishna, you have been very merciful to me. <coughs> Adhame Raprati I am a Adham, a fallen person. Kilagiya Anile Hetha Ki lagi le? For what purpose you have brought me over here? I do not know. Ani le heta? Koro ebe gati. Now whatever you want me to do, please do it with me. Now, if we look at the history of Sri Shri Prabhupada's life as given in the Lamrut, before he embarked on this historic trip, actually Prabhupada struggled tirelessly to share Krishna Bhakti in India and seeing that Indians were not interested he decided to share it in America and then get Americans interested so that Indians would also become interested seeing that the Americans are interested seeing the Americans who are emit, who, who are like models for us they are doing it now Srila Prabhupada talked with thousands of people practically uh, during his outreach and he mentioned to them that he had a desire to go to America and Prabhupada did not have funds, he did not have contacts, he did not have um, assistance and yet we see that he endeavoured tirelessly so the point is that he endeavoured tirelessly but Prabhupada is giving credit to Krishna for having brought him there he is not thinking that, oh, I sat almost several hours outside the <coughs> office of Sumti Muraji somehow to get an appointment with her and then I had to convince her somehow to give me passage on Jaraduta. How much I have troubled, my, how much trouble, how many troubles I have taken. No, a devotee does not see one's, the troubles one has taken. A devotee sees that it is Krishna's grace that has enabled me to go beyond those troubles, to find a way ahead in spite of those troubles. And the devotee focuses not on one's own sacrifice, but on Krishna's grace. So therefore, he says, Krishna, you have, you have brought me here. Boro Krupa Koile Krishna. Actually, you have been very merciful to me that you have brought me here. Adhamera Prati. So, bringing, Prabhu, Krishna, bringing Prabhupada to Krishna, Prabhupada says, is mercy. Now materialistic Indians may think, oh, going to opportunity, going to America is a great opportunity for us. Because America is a land of liberty and opportunity. But Prabhupada was thinking in entirely different terms. 
Adha Mera Prati was thinking that I am a fallen person because you know, my spiritual master has given me an instruction to preach in the western world and I have not been able to do it. <coughs> so, Bhakti Sanat Sri Thakur gave the instruction in 20, 1922 and Prabhupada is thinking I am 44 years late. Prabhupada out of his great transcendental humility will say that I was in Maya, that's why I did not take up that instruction immediately. But it was not Maya, it was Krishna arranging uh, to prepare Prabhupada through a lifetime of preparation. Anyway, the point is now Prabhupada has got the opportunity to fulfill the instruction of the spiritual master. And that itself a disciple considers to be a blessing. And for that blessing, Prabhupada is grateful to Krishna. So, you know, to get an instruction from a spiritual master is a blessing. To get the opportunity to fulfill the instruction is a blessing. And to actually fulfill the instruction is also a blessing. Now, Srila Prabhupada has got the opportunity to fulfill the instruction by having come to America. So, he is saying, Thank you, Krishna. Boro Krupa Koile. You have done an immense favor to me. Kila Gila Anile Heta. But what is the reason you have brought me here? Now, America, or Americans at that time were culturally, intellectually, religiously, educationally, linguistically, in practically all possible ways, quite different from India and Indians. So, how were they going to become devotees? So, it, is, it was inconceivable. In fact, many of Prabhupada's godbrothers even considered it impossible. But Prabhupada is saying that, I do not know what is your purpose. But, surely you must have some purpose. So, a devotee, he, it's not that when you become a devotee, suddenly everything becomes clear. There is always a light ahead of us showing us, go this way, go this way, go this way. No, often we may be in situations also where things may be unclear for us. So, Prabhupada writes in a purport that a devotee may be perplexed, but a devotee is never discouraged. Perplexed means to not know what to do. Discouraged means to not want to do anything. Uh, devotee wants to serve Krishna always. So, then that's a devotee never discouraged because <coughs> Krishna is the source of all love and is the source of all hope. So a devotee never has, to, never becomes hopeless or feels forsaken. But still, the devo though the devotee wants to serve Krishna, it's not that at all times how I should serve Krishna is clear. But there is perplexity. So, kila uh, gilya anele. So, this uh, uh, Prabhupada is very candidly speaking to Krishna. Krishna, why you brought me here? You know, this, uh, this phrasing of Bengali is so sweet and the uh, import is so intimate. That it is as if Prabhupada is talking to a close friend. And Krishna is that close friend. And suppose, you know, sometimes children play a blindfold game and then after being blindfolded, one, pers uh, one person is taken from, a child is taken to another place. Or a person is taken to another place. And then, uh, it's such a strange place. Why you brought me here? So like that, Prabhupada is interested himself to Krishna. And this is, it's this, this profound trust of his heart in Krishna. He's revealed, Krishna, why have you brought me here? But whatever is your, you must have a purpose. You never do anything arbitrarily. You know, life may not be logical, but it is always teleological. Logical means what we can comprehend with our intelligence. Teleological means that which has ultimate meaning. That in history, in nature, in life, there is some ultimate purpose that is being served. So, Life is always life is teleological because Krishna is ultimately in control. There is a purpose for which things are happening, and uh, Prabhupada has that faith, and he is saying that whatever you have brought me for, Krishna, please do it with me. And ach, now that he emphasizes in this next verse, Achhe kechu karya tabe ei anumane nahi ke no ani be na ei ugrasthane. Achhe kechu karya. It must be some work for purpose for which you have brought me here, Krishna. Ei anuman. Now, anuman is speculation, we may say. Is speculation bad? Prabhupada often said speculation is bad. But then, there are times 
and we don't know for sure and at that time we have to take make inferences so anuman doesn't have to mean speculation it can mean inference also so i make an inference because you don't do anything just like that so you spoke through my spiritual master that i should preach to the best and you have arranged for me to come to the best therefore you must have some work for me krishna ei anuman e nahi ke no ani ben otherwise why would you have brought me to here ei ugra sthan e this terrible place this ugra now the word ugra normally would conjure images of something very ghastly maybe some bloody battle where bones are scattered and blood is uh, flowing or something like that the the sky the skyscraper lit skyline of america with its smooth roads uh, and flashy cars and overall opulence you know, who would think of that as ugrasthan but prabhupad is seeing this from the point of view of uh, he for him ugra is not just something which appears materially and material and pleasant but ugra is that which is spiritually alienated from krishna so for a devotee krishna is the essence of life and disconnection with krishna make is is terrible so because the civilization that he saw in front of him was so was so lost was lost in materialism so he felt that this is a ugra sthan and he says oh krishna why 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 have you brought me to this terrible place ugrasthan eh now we'll describe what is this ugrasthan further what is it that makes it ugra rajastamo gune era sabai achana vasudev katha ruchi nahi se prasanna so rajastamo gune era that by the modes of passion and ignorance sabai sabai achana all of them are covered over all of them are having their consciousness obscured so prabhupad has is so deeply rooted in shastra chakshu that he is not seeing the prosperity of america which is what would catch the attention of most people prabhupad noticed it but what he saw is the mm, spiritual calamity that beheld that he beheld in front of him that people being covered over by the modes of passion and ignorance were disconnected from god and because they were covered by the lower modes they were unlikely to understand or relish the message of god even if he gave it to them vasudeva katha ruchi nahi se prasanna so now prabhupada knows that what is he going to go go come and do over there is going to speak krishna katha but if people are covered by modes of passion lower modes how will they understand krishna katha they won't get any pleasure in it so nahi se prasanna and this is what prabhupada sees as his primary obstacle now for him his weapon in sharing in coming here is speaking krishna katha and the obstacle was like there may be a sword but if the other person is wearing a armor the sword will just sword the tax will be blocked and made useless by the armor now the armor is of course meant to protect but armor checks also the attack so like that prabhupad is that these people are covered by the lower modes and those lower modes will make uh, them make them impervious to krishna's message very difficult for them to understand so prabhupad is giving a glimpse of his heart over here he is not concerned about the other obstacles which would have obvious obstacles which have occupied the minds of lesser mortals you know he is not thinking that oh i have come without any money i don't know how i will be received because the person who is going to meet me uh, i have never met him before uh, will he be will he like get a proper place to say i just recovered from a heart attack how will my health stay on um he is not thinking of any of these things in any of the considerations of roti kapda makan 
Now, food, clothing, and shelter, they are actually going to be grave challenges for Shila Prabhupada because nothing is guaranteed. He, as we know, went just with 40 rupees, which are practically less than just a few, one or two meals worth in America. First of all, they were not even convertible because there were not many Indians in America at that time. And so Indian currency is not convertible also. But what an adventure it is that Srila Prabhupada has come here and he is now thinking, not even thinking of bodily considerations, he is thinking only of missionary considerations. And it, with the missionary consideration is that, okay, how will these people understand Krishna Katha? So, this is the Boston Pyre. So, Prabhupada came to this place when he decided to go to America. This was the place where he approached and it was seeing this coastline that Prabhupada composed this song. And now he is present, he's presented the problem that they can't understand, but then they can understand by your mercy, Krishna. So please have mercy. That is his prayer now. Tabe jadi taba kripa hoi ahe tu ki sakal i sambha hoi tumi se kau tu ki. So, if your mercy is there, taba kripa hoi, and now your mercy is causeless, now they are undeserving for your mercy, they have not done anything to see the mercy, but still, you, you are causelessly merciful. So, if somehow you get become merciful, then sakala i sambhav hoi. Everything is possible. Tumi se kautu ki. You are such an astonishing person, my dear Lord, that you can do anything. <coughs> so, Prabhupada writes in the Ishopanishad, one of the last purports, he says that, the Supreme Lord is so powerful that he can make a dog enter into an elevated Brahmana and he can make a Brahmana into a, a degraded dog eater. So the Lord can change. Now we think of power simply in terms of say lifting something heavy. Krishna is powerful because he lifted Govardhan Hill. Yes, that is power definitely. But the power that matters most in terms of changing our, changing our lives, in terms of helping us find happiness is the power of transforming our hearts and Prabhupada is expressing confidence that Krishna you have this power for you everything is possible and those who met Srila Prabhupada in the early days his disciples and other admirers and other scholars of religion other people, one of the things that struck them about Srila Prabhupada was that Krishna was such a intimate a reality for him. Prabhupada would talk about Krishna as if he was a very familiar friend to him. And Prabhupada would tell devotees that you just serve Krishna. You just try to you just try to serve and Krishna will give you intelligence. A devotee had dropped out of a college. Prabhupada asked him to become the editor of Iskon's magazine. How will I be able to do that? He said, no, just try. Krishna will help you. And Prabhupada called Dham Buddhi Yogam Dham. Krishna will give you intelligence. So, a devotee's, a devotee's self-confidence is actually not self-confidence, it is Krishna confidence. No, I can't do, uh, I may not be capable of doing things, but Krishna is capable of doing anything and everything. And I have faith in Krishna. So, Krishna, sakala i sambhav hoi, for you everything is possible. And you can even make these people, these <coughs> who are covered by the modes of passion and ignorance, you can even make them understand your message. Ki bhave bujha le tara bujhe se iras eta krupa karo prabhu kori ni jabash Ki bhave bujha le How will they be able to understand bujhe se iras Now the concept of rasa is so deep and it is actually for a rasik audience, it is for a refined audience. So, oh, the sweetness, the mellows of Krishna Bhakti, at one level it's dancing and chanting and singing, that seems to be loud and uh, uh, so effusive. Yes, that is one aspect of Bhakti, but apart from that, there is also the aspect of personally, individually relishing, uh, relishing uh, the nectar of Krishna consciousness, whether it has been the holy name, whether in the scripture, or the association of devotees, darshan of deities. All that requires rasa 
and how can an unrefined audience understand this so just as a it requires a person with some expertise in art to understand um, to relish a masterpiece of art similarly devotion in the, some of the external activities may be immediate dancing singing might be likable for some people for many people even but then to relish the rasa of bhakti requires a refined consciousness so prabhupada is saying ki bhave mujhe how will they be able to understand it it krupa karo prabhu so please oh prabhu oh krishna do this grace on me and kori nije bash bring them under your control help them to become uh, purified so that they will be understand they will be able to understand your messages message and relish that message tomara ichcha hai sab hoye maya bash tomara ichcha hai nash maya ra parash so tomara ichcha hai by your desire sab hoye maya bash everyone has come under illusion by your desire tomara ichcha hai sab hoye nash maya ra parash and maya's trap can be destroyed by your desire now ichcha here ultimately refers to krishna sanction it is not that krishna wants people to go into illusion but when somebody uh, wants to try out material enjoyment forgetfulness of krishna krishna allows that so he says that ultimately nothing could have happened without your sanction so even all these people who are under illusion they are not out of your jurisdiction krishna they are under they are in, under illusion but illusion is under you so they are still under your jurisdiction so you can transform them and transfer them from uh, maya's jurisdiction to your own personal jurisdiction and that's how they will become free from illusion so when devotees speak about krishna uh, to others this is a good consciousness to have it's not that we think that i will speak so eloquently that people will become inspired and transformed by my speech no we simply want to become a channel of krishna's compassion and it is krishna alone who is in who is doing everything it is he from our hearts who is giving us the words to speak and it is he who is there in the hearts of others of the audience and he is helping them to understand and he is giving them inspiration to change themselves so <laughs> when we want to share krishna's message this sort of meditation can bring us both humility as well as vitality humility because we know that we are not the doers vitality means energy because we understand that krishna is the doer and krishna is supremely compassionate krishna wants us to share his message and krishna wants these people to get his message so we pray tomara ichchaya nasha maya raparash krishna by your desire their illusion can also be destroyed तब इच्छा होए यदि तादेर उद्धार बुझी बे निश्चय तबे कथा से तुमार तब इच्छा होए यदि सो इफ इट इज योर डिजायर माय डियर लॉर्ड तादेर उद्धार ना समटाइम्स वी मे स्पीक अबाउट कृष्णा एंड पीपल मे नॉट अंडरस्टैंड और एक्सेप्ट एट ऑल सो व्हाई डज इट हैपन बिकॉज़ दे आर नॉट इट स्पिरिचुअली मैच्योर दे आर नॉट हैव बिकम ओपन माइंडेड दे डू नॉट हैव द डिजायर टू कम टुवर्ड्स कृष्णा सो व्हेन कृष्णा व्हेन द द राइट टाइम कम्स व्हेन कृष्णा विल्स दे विल कम so tadera udhar so if it is your desire that they become delivered now then my message will become understandable to them so please make that happen so bujhi be nischaya so prabhupad is not thinking oh my pronunciation is so poor even when indians go to america they often give tofel and before that they try to train themselves so that they don't they can remove their indian accent and speak <coughs> more like american and thereby make themselves more intelligible and more appealing to americans prabhupada is not thinking in these terms he is not saying to krishna krishna please go to my english pronunciation that people can understand my message he is saying that krishna if you desire then bujhi be then they will be able to understand in bujhi be nischaya tabe katha se tomar and he is not even saying they will understand the classes that i will give he says they will understand your katha so oh, prabhupad is clearly saying himself simply as an as an instrument for krishna 
So he is saying that it is your message which I will be speaking and it is you who in their hearts will enable them to understand and this way if you so desire you will deliver these people. So a devotee is a uh, sense of non-doership comes not from not taking, taking responsibility to do things but from understanding that ultimate success depends on Krishna no matter how much we do. And in that sense it is Krishna who is the ultimate doer. So Prabhupada recognizes this and acknowledges this over here. And then Bhagavatir Katha Se Tabavatar Dhirahaya Shone Jati Kane Bar Bar So now he brings us to the crux of his message. He says that Bhagavatir Katha Se Tabavatar so Krishna, you have descended as the Bhagavat Katha. You are manifested as the message of the Bhagavatam. And he says, You are omnipotent. The message of the Bhagavatam is omnipotent. And what happens if somebody, Shunya Jadi Kane Barabar, if one hears again and again, then the result is Dhirahaya. One becomes sober. The word Dhira comes many times in the Bhagavad Gita. Dhira Stakra Namohiyati. A dhira person is not disturbed by bodily changes because that person understands that my real existence is beyond the body. So, <clears throat> what the Bhagavad Katha does is not just give us an intellectual understanding. Yes, it does give us an intellectual understanding of our transcendental identity. But along with that, <clears throat> it elevates us to a higher level of consciousness. It elevates us to spiritual consciousness by which we can understand experientially we can realize and relish experientially a higher non-material enrichment as devotional fulfillment in connection with Krishna and by that we realize oh this is so fulfilling that material pleasures are insignificant and material problems are also insignificant yes they may concern me at times because I have to live and serve in the material world but they don't have to disturb me because at my core, I am an, an indestructible soul and I am forever safe with Krishna. Krishna always loves me and I can love him back. And our uh, life of love can go on no matter what happens in this world. So by hearing Bhagavad Katha, we start realizing and relishing Krishna's love for us and we start uh, developing love for him and relishing that love too. And in that way, we become dhira, we become sober towards other things. So Prabhupada is saying, and hear that this is his faith. Yes, these people are materialistic, they are covered by the lower modes. But if somehow they keep hearing Bhagavatam again and again, then they will all become sober. So this is the essence. Prabhupada went to America and then travelled all over the world to give Bhagavad Katha and help people to become sober. Now Prabhupada goes into the Bhagavatam and here he speaks verses from the second, second chapter of the first canto wherein he speaks verses which talk about how he has how the process of hearing works so Prabhupada puts these uh, Sanskrit verses in the middle of his song so he's not concerned so much about original copyrights or oh, this is my song nobody else should take it and I should not quote anybody else no he's simply concerned about conveying the message that is important for the audience to hear so he spoke, he is spoken the message which he wanted to speak himself, beseeching Krishna. And now he is further expressing his confidence in the weapon that he is going to use. That weapon is outlined in the Bhagavatam. Among all the sections of the Bhagavatam, the ones that Prabhupada quoted the most, that is 1.2 section, which is 1.2.6 to 22, where Prabhupada explains that this as uh, this is this, this verse is outlined dharma, the way to transcendence. That's then in a book by that name, Prabhupada lectures on these verses have been compiled together. And Prabhupada is telling over here, he's quoting some of the verses over here to illustrate this point that how devo how the process of hearing, how by Bhagavatera Katha one can become dhirahaya. That process is described now by Shri Prabhupada. Shrivatam Sakatha Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Pradyantastoya Badrani Vidhanoti Sarit Satam. When we hear Swakatha Krishna, Krishna is present in our heart only. And if we hear his message, 
ಪುಣ್ಯ ಶ್ರವಣ ಕೀರ್ತನ್ನು ನಾವು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪಿಷಿಯಸ್ ಬಟ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಹೃದಯ ಅಂತಸ್ತೋಯ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ಇಫ್ ಒನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ ಐಗರ್ಲಿ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ಲಿ ದೆನ್ ದ ಅನರ್ಥಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಇಲ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಕೆನ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನೋ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ಹೃದಯ ಅಂತಸ್ತೋಯ ಭದ್ರಾಣಿ ವಿಧೂನೋತಿ gets completely washed away because krishna is our well wisher suhrut satam satam is the spiritualist the devotee ultimately so krishna is there suhrut he is great well wisher so prabhupada is ex- outlining the process that he is going to use this in bhagavatam so what happens when one starts hearing nashta prayeshu bhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati ruttamash ukleke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki so once devotion becomes extremely strong situated irrevocable fact and bhagavati uttama shloke and to that lord who is uttama shloka bhaktir bhavati naishtiki so if we regularly serve the bhagavat by hear the bhagavat and serve the bhagavatas then most of the anarthas from our heart will be removed and strong irrevocable devotional service will be established in the heart so prabhupad continues to outline the process now in his bengali song he mentioned how <coughs> the mode of passion ignorance is making things to, will make things difficult for his audience to understand now he said in the, that nothing is beyond the jurisdiction of krishna consciousness so even for this problem there is a solution a solution is yes hearing is difficult it is not relishable if you are covered by the modes of passion ignorance but if one keeps hearing then that hearing itself destroys the lower modes tadar jastamo bhavah kam lobhad yashchaye chetai tairana vidham sitam satve prasidati ah rajastamo bhavah the lower modes to rajantama and they are manifested as kam lobhad yashchaye as lust and greed chetai tairana vidham so from the consciousness these get removed prabhupad says that as long as lust anger greed are tormenting us that means we are not spiritually advanced we are not absorbed in krishna but once we become absorbed in krishna then the influence of the modes of passion ignorance subsides then we don't feel this torment in the heart this pinch in the heart titam satve prasidati and once this torment is removed prasidati we become peaceful we become joyful we become situated in the satam satve in the mode of goodness so a person may be just sitting and hearing but the sitting and hearing can bring about such dramatic transformations evam prasanna manaso bhagavad bhakti yogatah bhagavat tattva vigyana mukta sangasya jayate so evam prasanna manaso once the craving one is free from the craving from material pleasure one is situated in connection with krishna one feels joyful prasanna manaso and then bhagavad bhakti yoga tah one is practicing bhagavad bhakti also yoga it connects us krishna the reservoir of all pleasure and then bhagavat tattva vigyanam then initially one just feel joyful but then eventually one becomes more and more cognizant of the reality who am i what is my relationship with krishna who is krishna he is so all attractive and he loves me in loving him is supreme happiness for me so all this bhagavat tattva becomes a vigyana it becomes a realization is not remain just a gyana theoretical conceptualization it becomes a relishable realization and then as one starts relishing krishna bhakti then one starts rejecting material enjoyment material bondage and in this way mukta sanga se jayate one becomes free from sanga from material association and then once this happens bhidyate hridaya granthe chidyante sarva samshaya shiyante chaasya karmaani drishtaye vaatmanishvare so this is very graphic sanskrit bhidyate hridaya granthes the not in the heart of attachment to worldly things that is cut off normally are we have two obstacles on the spiritual path at the subtle level uh, one is created by the mind that is desires and attachments and the other is created by the intelligence which is doubts so both get removed by the process of bhakti so chidyante sarva samshaya all the doubts get removed all the attachment get removed and then one no longer does any further karma one never doesn't do anything that will cause further bondage so shiyante chaasya karmani 
Drishtaivatmanishwar, even understand that Atma is Ishwara, not the Parameshwara, but the Atma is the Ishwara in the sense that the soul is beyond the body. The soul is Ishwara is controller. And in this way one attains toward, goes towards liberation. So now <coughs> Prabhupada now after quoting this a brief extract from the Bhagavatam returns back to his uh, verse analysis. Rajastamo Hateta Be Pahi Be Nistar Rudaira Badra Shati Uchi Be Tahar. So Rajastamo Hate Tabe. And if we just hear Krishna's message, then the, what will happen? The Lord Mode will go Pai Benistar. They will get relief from the endless torments of material existence which one is subjected to in the lower modes. And Ridaira Abhadra Shate, that actually Abhadra, the inauspiciousness thing in the heart, Guchi Betahar, they will all go away. Now Prabhupada prays, Kikore Bhujabo Katha Baro Sei Chahi. Shudra ami di nahi na kono shakti nahi. So, he says, ki kore buja wo katha. How, will, how are they going to understand this uh, uh, message? It's going to be difficult, nearly impossible for them to do it on their own. But I want one help from you. Barose chahi. This is what the boon I want. Shudra ami di nahi na kono shakti nahi. So he says, Prabhupada has done such a heroic, such a bold activity to go to America single-handed. And yet he is saying, Di nahi na, I am so fallen, I am worthless. Kono shakti nahi. I don't have any strength. He's not thinking that by, by the power of my eloquence, by the effulgence of my personality, I am going to influence people. He's thinking, Krishna, you give me this bara, please. I depend on your blessing, that somehow by your blessing, they will understand your message. If therefore then my lord, katha boli bare. If you have brought me here to speak your message, then Jetomara Icha Prabhu. Whatever is your desire, Prabhu, Koro I will do what you want me to do. So this Prabhupada's specific prayer and that prayer itself is filled with devotion but even the uh, <coughs> even his uh, Markini Bhagavatam concludes with uh, an admission that I don't that if this is what I think should be happen but if you have some other plan I, I'll surrender to you my dear Lord Jetama Raicha Prabhu whatever is your desire I'll do that that thy will be done not mine so what Prabhupada is saying is an excellent example of that surrendered consciousness. So I, Prabhupada is going ahead with the plan of speaking Krishna Katha. That is his weapon for transforming people's heart and he doesn't know whether that is going to work or not. He has faith that it will work. But whether people will be able to understand it or not, in their condition, because in their condition stage they cannot, Prabhupada is saying. But Krishna has all mercy, has all potency to make even them understand. Therefore, he is requesting Krishna to help people understand the Krishna Katha. And if this is not your purpose in bringing me here, my dear Lord, I will accept whatever you want me to do. Akhila Jagat Guru Bachan Seyamar Alankrita Kori Bara Khamata Tomar Akhila Jagat Guru That, oh Lord, you are the master of the whole world, your spiritual master, Jagat Guru of the whole universe. Bachana se amar, my words, alankrita koribar. Please ornament them. Shamata tomar, and you have the capacity to ornament. Now, Prabhupada is not talking about, say, literary ornaments, similes, and puns, and chiasmas, and things like that. Prabhupada is talking about the ornament of devotion and of devotional potency. Let you let my speech be infused with your devotional potency and thereby they will be attracted, they will become inspired. Tabha krupa hale mora shuddha katha shuddha bahabe shunya sabara shoka dukha jeguchi be So tabha krupa hale mora 
सो इफ यू हैव मर्सी ऑन मी माई डियर लॉर्ड कथा शुद्ध अबे सो माई स्पीकिंग विल बिकम प्योर एंड पोर्टेंट प्रभुपाद इज इंसर प्योर हार्टेड बट ही इज नॉट मेकिंग ग्रैंड यूज क्लेम्स ऑफ हिज ओन प्योरिटी से इस माई कथा विल बिकम प्योर इफ यू हैव मर्सी ऑन मी एंड देन इफ सच ए प्योर कथा दे हियर देन शून्य सबर अशोक दुख जे घुची बे Now, when a doctor goes to a patient, and sees the patient sick, sometimes the patient may be suffering so much that even the doctor may think, "Oh, will this patient be cured?" I don't know. But if the doctor wants to actually cure the patient, at least the doctor has a confidence that I have to I do something, or uh, I consult other doctors to diagnose and decide what to do, or I send the patient somewhere else. But if the doctor is to enthusiastically take up the responsibility of treating the patient. then the author has to the doctor has to have confidence that yes these medicines will work similarly proper the thing whole art confidence that yes this must work so tob krupa so krishna as a prabhupada as a doctor on behalf of krishna the supreme doctor is saying that he has confidence that if people hear krishna katha then all their miseries will go away they'll all become spiritually joyful and that's why he is eager to administer the message of krishna katha in fact he has himself gone uh, practically more than half the world across to administer this message aniya che jadi prabhu amare na chate na chao na chao prabhu na chao se mate kashthir putli jatha na chao se mate so aniya che jadi prabhu so if you have brought me here my dear lord aniya che na cha amare na chate prabhu na chate na cha Am I? If you have brought me to dance over here, then nacha, nacha, Prabhu. Then I surrender, my dear Lord. Please make me dance. And how should I dance? I am completely surrendered to you. I have no free will of my own. Whatever you tell me, I'll do it. Kashthe ra putali sir. Just as the puppet dances according to the puppeteer, so please make me dance. So Prabhu is explaining, expressing utter surrender over here to Krishna, saying that it is by your intelligence that I will be able to preach. Please guide me. Nachao se mati and how wonderfully <coughs> Krishna made Prabhupada dance despite being at an advanced age. He got Prabhupada to travel across the globe fourteen times, inspiring thousands of devotees, inspiring, writing so many books, and attracting and transforming so many people's hearts. to such a wonderful dance of love that <coughs> with every step of the dance of love that the prabhupada was doing you know the ground of materialism was shaking and shuddering and shattering and there emerged this wonderful shelter of the krishna consciousness movement which the prabhupada gave us so <coughs> prabhupada even towards the last days Kept his message the same. Just stay in the association of devotees and hear Krishna Katha. That will keep you pure. So that will stay you from the more lower mode of the passion and ignorance, and enable you to stay close to Krishna and rejo- rejoice in Krishna. So the message that he gave at the start of his uh, mission, when he was before before he reached America and before he had made even one devotee, and the message that he gave after he had made thousands of devotees, when he was now when he was about to depart from the world. message was the same it like the doctor doesn't have to give new medicines so if the old medicine works and all the doctor has to do is mis- remind the patient keep taking the medicine so normally when patients are sick the patients go to the doctor um, prabhupad was such a compassionate doctor that he went to the patients and he went at great risk to his life and at enormous inconvenience and danger accepting it all he reached and he gave us this message so we can pray to krishna also that we receive gratefully the message the message of krishna bhakti that prabhupada has given us that krishna has given us the prabhupada and that in our own small way possible if we can also nachao nachao prabhu nachao samart we can also dance according to krishna's will we can also do service for him and we can also turn back to him eventually thank you pray krishna